information released to RNZ reveals that Shane Jones's office was sent documents about a forestry company's bid for $15 million from the Provincial Growth Fund multiple times and many months before he declared a conflict of interest because of links between the company and the New Zealand First Party. In fact, it has now emerged that Mr Jones only declared a conflict of interest over the New Zealand Future Forest Products bid on the day Radio New Zealand lodged an official information request asking for details of his involvement. That request was made by Guyon Espiner and he joins us now. Evening, Guyon. So this comes down to who knew what and when. So what can you tell us about what Shane Jones knew and when he knew it? Yeah, just to back up a little bit first, Shane Jones has said he declared a conflict of interest over this bid for funding on October the 14th, that he did so because of his relationship with Brian Henry. Brian Henry, of course, the lawyer for Winston Peters and also the judicial officer for New Zealand First, so a powerful figure in the New Zealand First Party, also a director of this company, Future Forest Products, and so is Jan Trotman, who is the partner for uh, of Winston Peters. So those are the close links that we talk about with New Zealand First. This new information that we've got is based on parliamentary written questions that were lodged by the National MP, Chris Bishop. He's been asking Shane Jones about this. It shows that Shane Jones received official documents on this bid for public money five times over four months between June and October. Some of these documents appear to be quite substantial. For example, back in July he was sent advice from the Provincial Growth Fund's independent advisory panel about the proposal. And all five times sent information about this bid until he declared this conflict of interests on the 14th of October. That's the same date that RNZ lodged the OIA asking about his involvement in the case. Curious. So the information that went to Shane Jones, do we know how explicit it was? So New Zealand Future Forest Products, did it contain details of who was behind this company? He says not. So we've gone to Shane Jones because there's a lot of questions for him to answer. Firstly, on the date of this, he says purely coincidence. It's a pure coincidence. His office says that he declared his conflict of interest on the day that RNZ lodged the information request asking what he knew about it. He says that is coincidence. We can only take his word for that. We can just lay out the sequence. So Future Forest Products is set up on March the 27th. By April the 8th, so only a few days after that, they've already got a bid in to the Provincial Growth Fund asking for this $15 million loan. Mr Jones has sent information about this thing five times. RNZ lodges its OIA on the 14th of October, the same day he declares to the Prime Minister that he has a conflict of interest. You ask about the documents. I mean, Shane Jones says none of these documents he received went into detail about the bid. He says none of them disclose that Brian Henry was behind the bid. He says the company's name wouldn't have meant anything to him because he didn't know who the identities behind the bid were. So he's sticking to his claim that he was only formally advised on October the the 14th about this bid um, going to the Provincial Growth Fund. National's saying, look, it's hard to believe that, given the information. I talked to Chris Bishop today. He said, quote, if he didn't know, he should have known because the documentation shows his office received five separate documents. He says that Shane Jones should have got out of this a lot earlier than he has. In response, Shane Jones says, look, he's handled it appropriately and that um, the bid was turned down, the $15 million bid was turned down anyway. Okay, so a couple of things. I just want to go back to that timeline you presented. This was a pretty substantial request for funding. So remind me again, the when it goes in between the company being formed and when they ask for the well, money? Well, it's, it's only just about a week after. That company is established. If you go to the company's office website, you can see this documentation. It's all public there for anyone to check it out. It's only set up on March the 27th. By April 8, there's already a bid in with the Provincial Growth Fund. Uh, so that is, is pretty... For $15 million. $15 million is what they wanted. They wanted a loan from the Provincial Growth Fund. Then by, by June, right through to October... 
Mr Jones is getting advice on this. Now, he's saying he, he didn't personally receive all these. Five times documentation was sent to his office. We know that from, from this documentation that's been uh, released today. He says that none of those documents outlined that Brian Henry or David Henry, who's his son, who's also involved, were involved in that. And he simply didn't know okay. that, that those people were behind uh, the bid. So to be clear, Mr Jones, a member of New Zealand First and a minister, says he is was utterly oblivious to the fact that people with very strong ties to New Zealand First were behind this company that made this bid. Yeah, that is absolutely right. And he's sticking to the idea that October 14, which is the date he declares the conflict of interest, that was the first time he was formally advised. And he's sticking to those words. He's done it in Parliament. And he's also saying it's coincidental that that was the same day that RNZ began asking questions about this case. But I have to say just finally, uh, there are more documents to be released about this and I suspect more questions to be answered by Shane Jones. Thanks, Guy, and we look forward to further updates. That's uh, RNZ investigative reporter Guy on Espiner. And if you want to look at his story in more depth, go into onto our website and uh, look for the in-depth section there.